I would now like to declare the result of the election. Please welcome the moderator of the United Church of Canada, Marty Tyndall. Friends in Christ here and across this church, today we begin getting to know one another better. For we have a much, much to do together over the next three years. Well, let me say how excited I am to have this opportunity to serve the church in this role. Um, folks, uh, there were some good friends who said, I'm not sure I hear you saying you, uh, you want to be moderator. <laughs> but I am so ready to serve the church joyfully in, uh, in this new responsibility. Something new is happening in creation. A convergence of concern across faith traditions. People of faith who are attuned to the needs of justice and the ways of spirit are coming together in the care of soul, of community, and of creation. We gather here today, as we do here today and in other congregations every Sunday, because we are people of faith. We are people of hope. We are Christians within a congregation of the United Church of Canada. What I've seen here in Haiti is beyond anything I could have imagined. Unbelievable destruction and suffering on the one hand, and on the other, amazing hope and faith-filled action. If Advent, as I suggested, is about turning from fear to joy, then perhaps Christmas is about turning from joy to responsibility. As your moderator, I greet you with gratitude and blessing on this special anniversary which you're celebrating today. As a denomination, we're marking our 85th anniversary, yet as communities of faith, our roots are centuries old. We have changed a great deal through 85 years, just as the country has changed. Hello, I'm Marty Tyndall, here in the Garden of Gethsemane, at the start of my own journey in Lent. It's impossible for me here not to imagine Jesus last night in the Garden. Christ is risen, Easter blessings from the Mount of Olives overlooking the old city of Jerusalem. I'm riding the Spirit Express across the country. All aboard! During this series of travels by train, I'm inviting folks to town hall meetings where we can share our ecological concerns and also our stories about how people of faith are acting together to make our communities more sustainable and healthy. Manitou has shown great leadership in care for creation. The crisis in God's world represents the greatest moral issue, the greatest moral challenge in our world today. I'm in Saskatoon and it's so good to be here. I have been learning a lot about the smell of the earth in Saskatchewan, about the taste of community in Saskatchewan, and about what the faithful church and good people working together look like. is my ninth official town hall within the last three and a half weeks or so. You also point to the importance of public policy and government action or inaction. And I also want, want to acknowledge that it's two Albertan senators. It's Senator Grant Mitchell and Senator Elaine McCoy, liberal and conservative who are the proponents of the Climate Change Accountability Act that's currently before the Senate. Thank you for them. And what I am hearing 
Everywhere I go is not only the stories of lament about what's happening to creation and what terrible destruction is taking place. I am also hearing stories of hope and that's what we'll do tonight. ministry in Martin Luther King Jr. inspired a whole generation to dream of a time when black and white together could live in justice and peace, in God's love in other words. Here at the COP15, another generation is being inspired by bleached ocean coral, dried up African maize and exposed glacial rock to imagine a time when all of God's creation can live together in peace and justice. Now is the time to turn from silence, to listen deeply, and to act boldly on behalf of the whole of creation, which God has created and loves. other faith leaders and faith communities gathered at the Diaconias Center in Durban, preparing to march and meet up with the Civil Society March. Together we're joined and joining in voices calling for climate justice. In his book, uh, Blessed Unrest, Paul Hawkins says, there are games that are finite and end, and then there are games that are infinite and keep the game going. I think what we've been about today with you and here is keeping the game going. Paul Hawkins says this involves prayer and potlatch, and I think if he knew the United Church, he'd add potluck. Yep. And this is about what it means to keep the game going in the healing of soul, community, and creation together. <laughs> 